You can deny reality, but you can't deny the consequences of denying reality. War is at the door. Everybody knows it except for Americans and in particular American Christians. And billions, billions with a B, are going to be eternally separated from a holy God. The truth is our God is just and our God is holy and our God is righteous and our God will not be mocked and our God will not be scoffed. Everybody tracking? commands us all throughout scriptures to call a solemn assembly. Today is the day of a solemn assembly. So I make no apologies for the word Lord. I make no apologies for the burden or the move of the spirit. I make no apologies for fear and anxiety that it causes to dwell up within you. Then you need to do business with the holy God who loves you. And you need to be perfected by his love. And you need to say, oh God, why am I so fearful and anxious on hearing these things? Oh, Lord, perfect me by your love. There's something about you I must not understand because your perfect love cast out all fear. Um, the Lord has been speaking and warning and speaking and warning and speaking and warning to me for nine years, in particular the last seven years, and has said every time he speaks, do not say a word about it until I tell you to. Do not say a word about it until I tell you to. Do not say a word about it until I tell you to. I felt like Ezekiel for so long where he's like, I'm going to bind you in your house, bro. I'm going to commission angels to bind you. And then I'm going to make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth so that you cannot go out and admonish the people until I tell you to. And then when you do, I will loose your tongue and you will speak what I tell you to speak, not what you would choose to speak. That makes sense? That's what the Lord's been doing. In my life for a long time, it's been very difficult to walk in, I shouldn't say difficult, maybe that's hyperbolic, but it, it's been a strain to walk in peace, joy, be industrious, productive, build and buy, do all these things and, you know, like uh, just love and go and enjoy and, buy, and just do life, right? For the last nine years, seven years in particular, when what the Lord has been speaking to me every day, this is what's going on, 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 this is what's going on. But don't say anything and carry on business as usual. It's been extremely difficult. There's a reason why I was burdened to write the book Omega Dynamics, equipping a warrior class of Christians for the days ahead. There's a reason why. There's a reason why we've gathered the people every year for the last five, six years for these summits. There's a reason why. It's because of these words that the Lord has not allowed me to speak until today. Today's the day. And he said, now you speak. Okay? So, and it'll only be in sound bites. So if you see every one of these tabs, this is nine years of the Lord speaking. And every one of these tabs is terror upon terror upon terror that you can't even conceive of. That the Lord has said for this nation in particular because of his people in particular. Over and over and over and over again. And so today, if you bear with me, we're going to get into it. So the bottom line of today is war. The red horse is being loosed very soon, war. I'm not gonna get into the geopolitics of it. Okay, I will just a little bit. I'm not gonna get into the nuance of it just a little bit. But just to tell you that war's here, okay? War is here. War is everywhere. They are staged everywhere. There are troops everywhere. There are hundreds of thousands of Chinese troops inside this country right now ready for attack. All the intelligence analysis, all the intelligence community, all the counterterrorism community, all the law enforcement community, all my buddies in the NSA, all my buddies in different intelligence apparatus, guys from the teams, if you know who the teams are, they're all saying the same thing. I got a text this morning from a good brother of mine who doesn't even know what I'm talking about today. And he said, I was at a gala last night. 
for the Clark County Sheriff's Department, which is Metro PD, Las Vegas. And he said, the sheriff said last night, last night, he texted me this morning, he has no clue what the Lord put on my heart for this week. He goes, it's the weirdest thing. Here he is at this sheriff's gala. And he said, everybody needs to prepare for World War III right now. Why is the Clark County Sheriff saying that to the people at a gala last night? There's a reason why that hurricane did what it did in North Carolina and Tennessee. Yeah, the quartz mines. Yes, the lithium. It's paving the way. It's paving the way for war. There's a reason why they shut down the ports for two days. It was to offload mega, mega, mega crew serve weapon systems major weapon systems. There's a reason why what's going on on Vancouver Island is. There's a reason why Hamas and Hezbollah have been allowed by our own government to build tunnels for the last decade. There's a reason why DHS and Border Patrol have been given stand down orders for the last five years as 10,000 Chinese troops a day come across the border. 10,000 a day. Do the math. There's a reason why Russia has shown so much strategic restraint no matter what the U.S. has done to Russia. You guys know that we attacked them with 158 drones? You guys know we blew up their largest weapons depot? Do you guys know that we took out all their over-the-horizon radars for incoming nuclear weapon systems? Did you know that? In real time? Did you know that Japan just had to shoot at Russian bombers coming towards Japan? Did you know that we had to chase off Russian bombers coming into Alaska this week? Did you know that boomers surfaced, nuclear-capable boomers, which are submarines, to prove that we got through all your coastal defenses and there's nothing you can do to touch us? Did you know that that happened this week? War. War is on the horizon. There's a reason why Iran hasn't retaliated yet. There's a reason why everybody's doing what they're doing. It's because the decision's already been made. It was made a long time ago. That's why. That's why there's no little tit for tat stuff going on. Everybody knows what's coming next. I've talked to guys in the long-term storage food community. Government in the last six months came in and bought out all the warehouses, all of their warehouses. There's a reason why you see they had to cull a million chickens and then they had to cull 600,000 this and then they had to cull 600 that. There's a reason why there's normal saline shortages. There's a reason why everybody knows what's coming next except for you and me, except for the populace. There's a reason why Germany told their citizens to dig holes in their basements to get ready for nuclear war. There's a reason why Sweden issued potassium iodine tablets to every citizen in the nation of Sweden for nuclear war. There's a reason why Norway handed out pamphlets on how to absorb nuclear strike in Europe last month. There's a reason why. It's here. War is here. The red horse is being loosed. Everybody tracking? There's your current events update. Revelation 6, 1 through 7 says this. I watched and the lamb opened the first of the seven seals. And then I heard the four living creatures saying in a loud thunder, come. And I looked and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow and he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard a second living creature say, come. And then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Uh, it's interesting what the color of communism is, isn't it? And communism is theosophy and theosophy is Luciferianism and communism is the Luciferianism and it's the number one governmental system of occultic practitioners, which is why all the liberals and all the Democrats worship and love communism and socialism because it is Lucifer's government. Everybody tracking? Okay, I digress. A fiery red one came out. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill one another. To him was given a large sword. 
When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come! And I looked before me, it was a black horse, and its rider is holding a pair of scales in his hands. And then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the olive oil or the wine. Hyperinflationary economy. Everybody checking? And when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures say, Come. And I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Horrible translation. It's chloros in the Greek, which means a green horse. But the uh, Greek scholars couldn't reconcile what a green horse was, so they changed it to the pale horse. It actually means a green horse. Its rider was named Death. It's an entity. It's a principality. It's capitalized. Its writer's name was Death and Hades. It's an entity. It's a principality. It's capitalized. Death and Hades are guys. They're things. Death and Hades followed close behind him. They're given the power over one-fourth of the world's population to kill with sword and famine and disease and the wild beasts of the earth. Just so you know, there's currently... 8 billion, 138 million people on the face of the earth. I was watching a real-time ticker to get that number, just so you know. And it was like adding, like keeping going as I was going. 8 billion, 138 million. One quarter of the world's population is about ready to be wiped out in a matter of 72 hours. One quarter of the world's population. That is 2 billion, 34 million, 500,000 people. And one quarter of the earth's population was killed by the sword and the famine and disease because all these things ride together and all of them are part and parcel to the singularity of war and the fallout of war and the outcomes of war. Economic collapse, conquest, war, sword, economic collapse, famine, disease, pestilence, all ride together. It's interesting to note that it didn't dawn on me until I was working through all this stuff this week as the Lord burdened me to work through it, that he's been telling me and speaking for the people what's going to happen for seven years and told me not to say a word. Seven years of plenty, seven years of abundance, seven years of peace, seven years to prepare, seven years to do business with a holy God who loves you, Seven years to grow your roots down deep into the living waters. Seven years. And it's interesting, almost seven years to the day of when he started speaking, he said, now speak. Almost seven years to the day. Okay? So I'm going to go through some dreams that the Lord's given me and also some words that the Lord's given me at the same time. So we're just going to work through it. All right? April 24, 2018. This is a dream. Let me give you context of when I was getting these visions. I was a carpenter. I was roofing houses. I had no ministry. There's no preaching. There's no teaching. There's no platform. There's no nothing. I've never even considered a YouTube channel because I think they're so gross and vain, right? Like I had no concept of all that. There was no book. There was nothing. It's me and Virginia and the kids living in poverty above a bar for free because we had no money as the Lord speaking these things. So keep that in context as you hear even different things that the Lord's saying, there was things he was speaking that couldn't even have been possible at the time that now are. The dream. I was in a convention center behind a pulpit and the congregation of a large mass of people and people from every walk of life were flowing in. Every walk of life that I've ever known. It was the craziest thing. It was so intimate. It was so detailed. It was childhood friends. It was elementary school friends. It was people in different jobs I had worked with. It was people I knew. It was Christians. It was unbelievers. It was people all around the world. We lived around the world. It was Marine Corps buddies of mine. It was anybody I've ever known. And they were flooded into this giant auditorium as I'm standing at this podium in pain and despair and sorrow and despondency washed over me 
like crazy. And I didn't know what to do. And as everybody came in, they weren't sure why they were there. They were kind of murmuring and talking once another. And all of a sudden, it all grew quiet. And the Holy Spirit said, speak now. And as I began to speak, a screen turned on behind me. And it looked like if you ever watched World War II in color, all these History Channel specials. And it was like this high speed flicker rate of every atrocity of war that's ever happened in human history. And it was black and white. It's this huge screen behind me. And it's just powering through all these images. And the Lord said, now speak. And I said, war is upon you. War is upon you. God is judging the inhabitants of the land. God is coming to judge the inhabitants of the land. These atrocities are here for you now. They're here for you now because the church who claims Jesus Christ failed you. They do not love their God. And now war is coming to your land to judge the face of the earth because of the Christians and because of the pastors. And as I was saying this, people started murmuring and talking amongst each other. And then a mega church pastor came running out of the crowd and shoved me off the pulpit and said, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Peace is coming. Security is coming. Revival is coming. God loves you. He's a false teacher. He's a false teacher. Don't listen to him. God loves you. Revival is coming. Peace is coming. God loves you. And then that guy was struck down. And I stood back up and I said, war is here, war is here, and war is here. And at that time, multitudes began to fall on their faces and repent. And multitudes began to gnash their teeth and wanted to rip me limb from limb from saying it at the same time. And the images, and I just started weeping at the podium, weeping at the podium, and the images kept flickering. Every mass grave, every, by the way, I've found mass graves. I have walked up on mass graves. I've seen what it looks like to see mountains of bodies on top of one another, just like when they took out Auschwitz and Birkenau and all these other places. I've seen it with my own eyes because I tracked it by smell in the suburbs of Baghdad. I've seen it. And that's what I was seeing. And the Lord said this, Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12. By the way, as I go through these things, I'll say this once for context. When the Lord speaks a verse to me, I have no clue what it is. I have no clue what it contains. By faith, I go, okay, Lord, if that's what you said, I'll turn there. I have no clue. It's not like I have the Bible memorized. I'm like, what's Jeremiah 12? The Lord said Jeremiah. Okay, Jer Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12. Here it is. Your relatives, members of your own family, even they have betrayed you. They have raised a loud cry against you. Do not trust them, though they speak well of you. I learned that the hard way. I will forsake my house, abandon my inheritance. I will give the one I love into the hands of my enemies." My inheritance has become to me like a lion in the forest. She roars at me, therefore I hate her. Oh, no, once saved, always saved. I hate her, my inheritance, my people, my beloved ones. She roars at me like a lion in the thicket. Has not my inheritance become like a speckled bird of prey that other birds of prey surround and attack? Go and gather all the wild beasts. Bring them to devour. Many shepherds will ruin my vineyard and trample down my field. Remember what I was screaming out in my dream? It's because of the shepherds. It's because of the church. It's because of the shepherds. It's because of the church. And the Lord says this now, Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12, Jeremiah 12. He says, many shepherds will ruin my vineyard and trample down my field. They will turn my pleasant field into a desolate wasteland. It will be made a wasteland, parched and desolate before me. The whole land will be laid waste because there is no one who cares. Over all the barren heights in the desert, destroyers will swarm. For the sword of the Lord will devour from one end of the land to the other, and no one will be safe. They will sow wheat, but they will reap thorns. They will wear themselves out, but gain nothing. They will bear the shame of their harvest because, the Lord's, because of the Lord's fierce anger. 
August 5th, 2018. Succession of four dreams. Every one of them, a Chinese invasion. Every single one of them was Chinese. Context, there was nothing in the news about China. China was nothing. China knew nothing. There was no concept of China. China was a nothing entity. They had no big major play on the public sphere at that time. So you have to think in the context. That's why I'm giving you the dates when these were given because there was nothing whatsoever on the radar about China, 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 anything. And every one of these dreams was Chinese troops invading everywhere at the same time while nobody even knew where they came from. Did you hear what I just told you is going on in the U.S. right now? Had no context. These are just dreams from the Lord. First one. Chinese invasion in the Northwest. I was walking with Virginia and the kids standing on uh, uh, like a, a boardwalk along a sound. In my dream, I had a knowing that it was Puget Sound in the Northwest, which is interesting because it's right outside Vancouver Island. So over the years, I've been able to like, why did the Lord show me that? Puget Sound, I've never even been up there to the Puget, to, to that area of the Northwest or whatever. Okay, so I'm walking along a seawall, or walking along at night with Virginia and the kids. There's a seawall there. There's a thing. I've actually thought about flying out there to see if I could find the exact spot that I saw in my dream because it's so vivid. It's so real. And as we're walking, I see this light boop, boop, flash way out. And I, I'm familiar with these things. I'm a war fighter, right? I know what I'm looking at. I know the weights. I know the whatever. I'm like, that was a low yield tactical nuke. That's not a 2000 pounder. That's not a whatever. I know exactly what I'm seeing because I know the flight. I know the flash. I know the whatever. I know the shock waves. And I go, oh my goodness. And it was on an island way, way, way out in the sound. Way, like way out, like some miles out, out there. And I see this flash and it goes boop, boop. And when it flashed, all of a sudden there was about three to five seconds where the entirety of this mass sound and all these little islands and all these things were visible. And there was armadas and armadas and armadas of amphibious assault landing craft chugging their way through the sound. And all these families were on the seawall and nobody had a clue what was happening. And they were just chugging in. Again, remember I'm a Marine. I know what it's like to do an amphibious assault and had the ramps drop on the beach, and then you take the beachhead. The Chinese were everywhere instantly, and nobody even knew. And all the people that were out there walking with their families looked on these craft with mild intrigue, no fear, because they had no idea that they should fear. There was no pre-existing condition for what was going on. They thought it was a novelty to see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of amphibious assault craft chugging through the water at night in the Northwest, and then it was done. I turned around, and they were already everywhere. Nobody even knew to be afraid. Next dream, Chinese invasion. Again, I was... With Virginia and the kids, it looked like a place like the Appalachians or the Ozarks. Low green mountains, low green mountains, very low level, not Rockies. It was Ozarks or Appalachia, that I can't tell you for sure. And as I'm standing there, again, I see all these cell towers out on a high point that are broadcasting and keeping comms up, and they go, boof, boof, boof. all of them got hit instantly. There was no comms. Instantly, there was no comms. And as I turn around, I'm in this suburban neighborhood filled with suburban, middle class, upper middle class, classic Americana suburbia. And they're looking at these cell towers getting blown up with mild curiosity. They start coming out of their houses, no fear, no concept, no reason to be afraid. They had no concept to be afraid. And as I turn around and do that, I see convoys, convoys of military trucks like what we would call five-ton trucks or whatever. And, and they broke off in sections of four and they pulled into every single neighborhood. It's like I could see a panorama of all the suburbia of America, all of America, and they whipped into every suburban neighborhood, four trucks per neighborhood. They, they whipped in and the ramps dropped on the back of the trucks and all these Chinese troops came out. I saw their camouflage. It's a camouflage of the Chinese troops that didn't exist until a couple of years ago. They got brand new uniforms. I had no concept of that. 
And they come out and they pile out and you want to know what all the suburban Americans were doing? They were all in their little aprons and cooking out and doing whatever. And all the kids are all over in the streets like you think it's suburbia on the cul-de-sacs. And they come out and they're like, hey, look, kids, look, look. It was a novelty. They had no concept to be afraid. They had no concept. It was a novelty to them. There was nothing going on in, in the reality of the United States of America that would cause them to understand that they had reason to fear. They actually started walking up to meet the guys and put out their hands to shake them because they thought it was some kind of whatever, nuanced thing. And the Chinese troops spread out and they massacred every single living, walking Anglo they could ever find. Every man, woman, and child. Systematic genocide, neighborhood by neighborhood by neighborhood. And they were everywhere all at the same time and nobody knew where they came from and there was no communications to warn anybody else that they were here. Chinese invasion dream. For some reason, I was at a golf clubhouse. <laughs> You'll never catch me at one of those, but <laughs> that's where I was in the dream. And as I'm coming out of this clubhouse, you know, there's a pool and everything. There is a couple girls out there laying out, you know, like 20, 30-year-old 30 30 year old girls, four or five of them sitting out there laying out, a couple families playing in the pool. And as I walk out of this clubhouse, and it was in the middle of the woods, and same thing, I see a convoy of four trucks coming down the lane. And I knew instantly it's happening. I knew, I knew it was happening. And I ran over to the pool. I said, get up, go now, go now, go now, go now. It's happening now. And they just looked at me like, you're such an idiot. Quit wrecking our day. And I was like, oh my goodness. And I took off and I started running for a tree line because I knew what was getting ready to happen. And as I watched the Chinese troops pulled up right in front of the clubhouse at the golf yard, the ramps drop. Remember, these, these dreams are spread out over the course of about three years. So they, it's not like they happened like all at one time. They just kept happening. And the ramps dropped from these four trucks. The Chinese, only ever Chinese, I've only ever seen Chinese. The troops get out, nobody's scared. Again, they're looking at them with intrigue. And the girls kind of come up and stand at the fence and they're in their bikinis and they're in their swimsuits and the families are curious and they're looking at these Chinese troops like, huh, this is a novelty again, an interesting novelty. And as I'm sprinting, I'm getting these snapshots because I look over at my shoulder every once in a while as I'm sprinting towards the tree line, knowing that today is the day of God's judgment. And as I look, it says graphic, sorry, I see the Chinese troops make the girls expose themselves to them. Made all of them line up at gunpoint, expose themselves to them. They laugh and mock and scoff at them, and then they execute them all. And as I hit the tree line, the Lord said, this is here now. Next dream, aerial combat everywhere, all at the same time, 10, 19 of 2018. This is very strange, given where we were at at that stage in life and how we came to be out here. I was in the middle of the Rocky Mountains where there's low-lying meadows, but there's mountain ranges that you can see silhouettes of at night, but you're in low-lying meadows. Sound familiar? Yeah. Kind of like where we're at right now, literally. Had no concept, never lived in the Rockies, never had a plan to live in the Rockies. And I'm in the Rocky Mountains and sitting around a fire pit with a bunch of men about 20 men. And as I'm sitting there, I look up and I see these, we call them sections of aircraft, right? All these fleets of small white dots that were about the same ambient light as the stars. That's how high altitude they were. And they're coming across the thing. And I talk to all these guys and I go, oh my goodness, that is the weirdest thing. You will never see military aircraft flying in, flying in formations like that, especially that huge. I'm like, there's hundreds of them. I'm like, look, look, you guys, something's happening. You guys, something's happening. And it was like, nobody cared. Nobody knew. Nobody cared. They scoffed a little bit and went back to their conversations. I said, look, guys, look. And as I started saying, look, guys, look, all of a sudden I started seeing what it looked like because it was so far in the distance, like a bottle rocket streak coming up from the ground. And you just see a little, these tiny little bursts. 
And I knew, oh my goodness, we're under full on assault. They're taking out this Armada aircraft overhead. And as I saw that, I saw another wave coming from the east. I mean, first they were coming from, from the east moving west. And then as I saw these surface to air missiles taking out thing, I saw another converging Armada coming from the west moving east. And as they got close to each other, it was just a melee in the air and little pops of burst as one after another were shooting each other down. And I go, you guys, it's happening, it's happening, it's here now, it's happening, it's here now. They had no context for it. They didn't care. They wouldn't even look up and engage it. They thought it was so ridiculous. I'm like, you gotta go now, you gotta go now, you gotta go now, and nobody listens. So I got up and started moving. For some reason, I was near a highway. It's interesting, we're near a highway, aren't we? We're about 200 yards from a highway. And as I ran over there, there was a whole convoy of people in RVs and campers and pulling campers, and they swung open the doors. It was like, couldn't even see the end of it. It was so long. And, they, and the head vehicle, the convoy, throws open those doors of the IV, our RVs. He goes, you know what's happening, don't you? It's time to go now. We all were warned too. And there was masses of people that had been already warned by the Lord as well too. They knew what was going on. They said, get in. We know where to go. That was the end of that dream. And as that dream ended, the Lord said, Amos 8, Amos 8, Amos 8. What in the world is Amos 8? This is what the sovereign Lord showed me, a basket of ripe fruit. What do you see, Amos? This is the Lord speaking to Amos. He asked, a basket of ripe fruit, I answered. Then the Lord said to me, The time is ripe for my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. And that day, declares the sovereign Lord, the songs in the temple will turn to wailing. Many, many bodies flung everywhere. Silence. He goes on to say in Amos 9, I saw the Lord standing by the altar. And he said, strike the tops of the pillars so that the threshold shake. Bring them down on the heads of all the people. Those who are left, I will kill with the sword. No one will get away. None will escape. Though they dig down to the depths below, from there my hand will take them. Though they climb up to the heavens above, from there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves on the top of Carmel, there I will hunt them down and seize them. Though they hide from my eyes at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the a serpent to bite them. Though they are driven into exile by their enemies, there I will command the sword to slay them. All the sinners among my people, among who? Will die by the sword. All those who say disaster will not overtake us or meet us. End of the dream. 10 2018. Ezekiel 7, Ezekiel 7, Ezekiel 7. Ezekiel 7. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. This is what the sovereign Lord says to the land of Israel. The end, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. The end is now upon you and I will unleash my anger against you. I will judge you according to your conduct and repay you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. I will surely repay you for your conduct and all the detestable practices among you. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Disaster, an unheard of disaster is coming. The end has come. The end has come. It has roused itself against you. It has come. Doom has come upon you. You who dwell in the land, the time has come. The day is near. There is panic, not joy, upon the mountains. I'm about to pour out on you my wrath and on you spend my anger against you. I will judge you according to your conduct and repay you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. I will repay you in accordance with your conduct and the detestable practices among you. Then you will know it is I, the Lord, who strikes the blow. The day is here. It has come. Doom has burst forth. The rod has budded. Arrogance has blossomed. Violence has grown into the rod to punish the wicked. None of the people will be left. 
none of that crowd. No wealth, nothing of value. The time has come, the day has arrived. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller grieve, for the wrath is upon the whole crowd. The seller will not recover the land he has sold as long as both of them live, for the vision concerning the whole crowd will not be reversed because of their sins. Not one of them will preserve his life. Though they blow the trumpet and get everything ready, no one will go out to battle. For my wrath is upon the whole crowd. Outside is the sword. Inside are plague and famine. Sound like the four horsemen? Sound like the first four seals? Over and over and over again, the Lord has been speaking for the last seven years. Those in the country will die by the sword. Those in the city will be devoured by famine and plague. All who survive and escape will be in the mountains, moaning like doves of the valleys, each because of his sins. Every hand will go limp. Every knee will become as weak as water. They will put on sackcloth and be clothed with terror. Their faces will be covered with shame. Their heads will be shaved. They will throw their silver into the streets. Their gold will be as an unclean thing. Their silver and their gold will not be able to save them in the day of the Lord's wrath. They will not satisfy their hunger or fill their stomachs with it, for it has made them stumble into sin. It's talking about your identity and your money and your wealth and your security. They were proud of their beautiful jewelry. It's a tough word for me. And use it to make their detestable idols and vile images. Therefore, I will turn these into an unclean thing for them. I will hand it all over as plunder to foreigners, as the loot to the wicked of the earth, and they will defy it. I will turn my face away from them. They will desecrate my treasured places. Robbers will enter it and desecrate it. Prepare chains because the land is full of bloodshed and the cities are full of violence. I will bring the most wicked of nations to take possession of their houses. I will put an end to the pride of their mighty and their sanctuaries will be desecrated. When the terror comes, they will seek peace, but there will be none. Calamity upon calamity will come and rumor upon rumor. They will try to get a vision from the prophet. The teaching of the law by the priest will be lost as well the counsel of their elders. The kings will mourn. The princes will be clothed with despair. The hands of the people of the land will tremble. I will deal with them according to their conduct and by their own standards. Think of the standards of the United States of America. And by their own standards, I will judge them. Then you will know that I am the Lord. December 9th, 2018. Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13. Oh Lord, what is Isaiah 13? What are you speaking, Lord? Isaiah 13. An oracle concerning Babylon that Isaiah Sama Avmas saw, raise the banner on a bare hilltop, shout to them, beckon to them to enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my holy ones. I have summoned my giants to carry out my wrath, those who rejoice in my triumph. Listen to the noise on the mountains like a great multitude. Listen, an uproar among the kingdoms like nations massing together. The Lord Almighty is mustering an army for war. They come from faraway lands, from the ends of the heavens, the Lord and the weapons of his wrath to destroy the whole country. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. Because of all this, all hands will go limp. Every man's heart will melt. Terror will seize them. Pain and anguish will grip them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look aghast at each other, their faces aflame. See, the day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger to make the land desolate and destroy the sinners within it. The stars of heaven and their constellations will not show their light. The rising of the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for its sin. I will put an end to the arrogance of the haughty and will humble the pride of the ruthless. I will make man scarcer than pure gold. Remember the numbers? A quarter of the world's population, then a third, then a third, then a third. 
a third of the third of the third of the third. It says, I will make men scarcer than pure gold, more rare than the gold of Ophir. Therefore, I will make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake them from its place at the wrath of the Lord Almighty and the day of his burning anger. Like a hunted gazelle, like sheep without a shepherd, each will turn to his own people. Each will flee to his native land. Look up the commentary. It says it's a land of immigrants that when the Lord begins to judge it, they all go back to their country of origins because the horrors that are in the land that they immigrated to. Sound familiar? Whoever is captured will be thrust through. All who are caught will fall by the sword. Their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives will be ravaged. You should read what China teaches in their military school, the equivalent of our West Point, on how to deal with any Anglos. They say, dash their babies, take their wives, and destroy them all. They have the highest form of xenocentric genocide. They are eight to 10 times, by scholars, eight to 10 times beyond the propaganda that Nazi Germany taught the German citizens about the Jews is what China teaches their citizens about the Anglos, just so you know, in case you didn't know that. You can read all what they say and write, it's just nobody cares. Nobody cares. They're telling you what they're getting ready to do. See, this is interesting. I will stir up against them the Medes. Who are the Medes? Who are the Medes? Who are the Medo-Persians? It's Iran. See, I will stir up against them the Medes who do not care for silver. They have no care for gold. They don't care. It's ideological. It's theocratic. They don't care. It's not about that. It's about destroying you because God's put it in their hearts to do it. Their bows will be will strike down the young men. They will have no mercy on your infants, nor will they look on compassion on your children. Babylon, the jewel of kingdoms, the glory of the Babylonians' pride, will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. How are they overthrown? In a single day, in an instant, in a single hour, it was done. There was no long grinding action. It was just done. She will never be inhabited or lived in through all generations. No air will pinch her tit there. No shepherds will rest her flax there. But the desert creatures will lie there. There the owls will dwell. There the satyrs will leap about. Hyenas and howls in their strongholds and jackals in her luxurious places. Her time is at hand and her days will not be prolonged. That was the last thing the word said to me. And then he said, after saying Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13, This is what will soon come to pass. This is why you must know and trust me. All will be revealed. It will not be hidden from you much longer. Go in the peace that remains. And I cried out, how long, O Lord, how long? And he said, when the new moon rises. I have no clue what that means. He just said it. And as I was going through all the words he's given me, I realized he said it three times over the course of the last nine years. When the new moon rises, that's when. When the new moon rises, what does that mean? I have no concept. I know that there's a new fake moon that just came into our orbit. I know that it's Yom Kippur. I know that it's the Feast of Trumpets. I know that every nation is currently amassing. I know that every piece of intelligence data in the world is saying, this week, all of it is coming this week. I'm not saying that. That's what they're saying. All of them are saying it. I know there's a reason why things are happening the way they're happening. Is it going to happen? I don't know. Don't care. I'm just telling you what the Lord said. Okay? This dream I'll skip over quickly, but the Lord gave me a dream where he showed me a tsunami about 150 foot high. This is what was in 2018 as well. That swept over the entirety of New York City, Manhattan Island and everything in it. Nobody knew where it came from. It was business as usual. I've learned since then about the Poseidon uh, torpedo that Russia has that is currently embedded in the Atlantic coastal shelf off the coast of New York City. And it's been sitting there for a couple of years just waiting for the day. 
And by the way, Poseidon is Lucifer, just so you know. And by the way, Russia's number one nuclear missile, the Sarmat-2, is called the Satan-2 missile. And behold, I saw Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Isn't it interesting how every little detail is right there? And I saw this 150-foot tsunami just rise up out of nowhere, and everybody was stunned by it. They didn't know where it came from, and it just wiped out a huge portion of the East Coast. And then the invasion. Dream, new senior missile attack coming from west to east. Saw it very particular. Again, I was in the mountains. I didn't live in the mountains. I had no plan to live in the mountains. We were living in the mountains, sitting on a grassy green knoll up in the mountains. I didn't know that those exist till we moved out here. They're all over the place. These huge meadows up in the high country, surrounded by all these giant 14,000 foot peaks. And I was with Virginia and the kids. And as I watched a missile go right overhead, going from west to east towards what I knew to be D.C. and New York City at the same time. And as I sat there in amazement, what was that? Another one came overhead, right over us. And it stopped above us and zoomed in right on this huge missile, this 100-foot missile, whatever it was, this giant missile. And on the missile, clear as day, I had to look it up after the dream. I saw a very particular flag about this big on the nose cone of this missile. And after the dream, I looked it up. It was the flag of North Korea. Had no clue. And then a third one, three missiles coming from west to east on a normal, beautiful, cool day, sitting with the family in the normalcy, in the whatever, three missiles from North Korea striking. I won't read to you all my laments to the Lord before he speaks. Typically, there's a reason why he speaks. There's pages of pouring out before the Lord before he goes, now it's my turn to speak. And just so you know, these particular ones that say, thus says the Lord, I was sick to my stomach to write, thus says the Lord. Do you know what that requires to put that to paper? Not knowing, is this from me, God? Is this from you, God? Is this from me, God? Don't let me misrepresent you. The fear of the Lord making you so sick that I as a man, weak, flawed, failed, double-minded, bent, biases, reading news, reading stuff that I could possibly make something up out of my own vain imaginations and attribute it to God. It is a very, very fearsome thing to put your pen down like this and he says, write it. Write it. Thus says the Lord. It makes me fearful even saying it. Write, thus says the Lord. If you will weep and mourn, if you will wail and tear your clothes, I will come near to you. I will restore you and be your refuge, but you must consecrate yourself. My anger is kindled. I can hold it in no longer. I have seen and heard with my own ears the cries of the innocent. I have seen and heard with my own ears the taunt of the proud against my glory and against my son. I will repay. I will do it swiftly for their time has come. I will not relent. This is a nation of demons, a hideout for all that is foul and unclean. Wickedness is at home within her. Here she has no fear of reproach. From greatest to least, all have tasted the fruit of deception and said in their own hearts, I am satisfied. A cruel people will crush their delight. A people from afar, a people without compassion, equal to the compassion you yourselves have withheld from the innocent. As you have cut, dashed, and devoured all innocence. When I speak like that, it's because that's how the Lord spoke it. I have it specifically verbatim how he says it. As you have cut, dashed, and devoured all innocence, so too will this people deal with you. While you are contented in your luxury and delighted in your revelry, I, the Lord Almighty, will do these things to you. For what else can I do with this people? They have no shame and they fear nothing. Therefore, this people they do not know will be to them altogether fearsome. They will taste the sour sorrow of their own shame. 
the time is at hand. I, the Lord, have spoken. On September 1st of 2019, as loud as day, Revelation 13, 7. What's Revelation 13, 7? And it was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe and people and language and nation. I cry out, oh Lord, what am I to do with such a word as this? I do not understand at all. The Lord spoke. Rest a little while longer. The end will come and not delay. Do as you have been told. Do not let my words fall to the ground. These things you have seen are not for a future generation, son. They will come to pass in your day and your time. I will reveal my justice. You need only stand firm. You will see it with your own eyes. The cost will be high. And he showed me my, all my family is going to be taken from me. It's okay. They know and I know what the end game is. He said the cost will be high. And he showed me that. But your reward will be great. 12 for 2019. The day is coming upon this nation lawless of lawlessness and perversion. It will come. It will not be delayed. Have you noticed a common theme? Every time for seven years, it will come and it will not be delayed. It will come upon all the inhabitants of the land, but special attention will be given to my people for what else can I do? Why, when they have given so much, have they produced so little? The kings and the kingdoms of the earth have become drunken by the filth of her perversions. It's talking about the church. He's talking about the church. By the land where my church and my body was lavished with my favor, I was prodigal towards you. You were only ever prodigal towards your flesh. You have sown in conformity to all that is detestable and vile. And so then that which is detestable and vile, you will reap. Tell those who use my name for such vainglory that I have heard and I have seen them. If only they would have cried out to me, I would relent. If they would renounce their alliance with Egypt and turn the people's hearts back to me, I am full of grace, but I am full of wrath and cannot hold it in. Their love of self is of greater worth than their love of me. Their fear of men is of greater terror than their terror of me. But to those who tremble at my word, who honor me and fear me, to those who grieve in Zion and are tormented by the lawlessness they've seen here in the city, I myself will spare them. I will give a command concerning you." Though your suffering will be great, I will sustain you, for my delight and loving kindness has fallen upon you. To those who I find giving my servants their food at the proper time, you good shepherds who are contrite and tremble at my word, you will again know my esteem. Remember, I wasn't a pastor. I was a carpenter. I wasn't anything. He's speaking to the shepherds out there. You will again know my esteem. I will give you the flocks of others, of sheep weak and weary. You will mend the wounds of many who have been preyed upon on the heights and in the, in the valleys. I will strike down all the shepherds who grazed in their pastures while their flocks wasted away in the dry places. Those who added to their flocks sheep that are not mine whose boast before both me and men is the size of their flocks. Their sheep are illegitimate. They are cloaked wolves who bring the way of truth into disrepute and of whom it is said, the word of the Lord is offensive to them. The time of sifting is at hand. This was 2019. Shepherds from hirelings, sheep from goats, wheat from tares, righteous from unrighteous, those who fear me from those who do not. These are the words I, the Lord Most High, have spoken 
To those who will hear, let him hear. To those who refuse, let him refuse. 128 of 20. Right as the breakout of COVID was coming, the Lord told me, this thing sweeping the earth is from my hands. Millions and millions will die and nobody will even take notice. They will go on business as usual. This will testify to you that my judgments are just and true when they come on the land. Because though I strike them, they will refuse to repent. Sound familiar? And then he said, tell my people I am coming soon. 312 of 20. Tell the people I am coming soon. Have you heard a theme? Those who love me and who honor my name above all else will make themselves ready. I'm setting before them a way that will be to the, of their own choosing. No longer will they be allowed to go on swearing by both the Lord and Moloch. No longer will I tolerate their sacrifices to Baal while uttering vain things to my anointed one. My people have done an astounding thing. The heavens are amazed and overcome with grief. The mysteries of my covenant have been revealed in full, my son in whom I delight. Great mysteries that all that has ever been and has has ever longed to know and understand, yet my people have trampled underfoot the glory of heaven. They have gorged themselves on the flesh of their king, and they pound the table and demand more. The more they multiply, the more detestable they have become. Their love feast and their fellowship offerings are offensive to me. Vanity, vanity, all they utter and all they do and all they think is vanity. I will be with them no more. You will again see the distinction between those who serve me from a pure heart and those who do not. The time of sifting is at hand. Each man will be held accountable according to the revelation of the mystery of my son that I've given them. To the faithful, I will show myself faithful. But to the complacent and the vain, I will be altogether terrifying. They will suffer loss beyond their ability to perceive. But in the end, I will restore them. I will confirm my covenant and heal all their diseases. These are the things I will do, declares the Lord. 420 of 20. Again, it's been three years since the last time I heard it. Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13, Isaiah 13. Oh God, I know what's in Isaiah 13 now. And he said this after I reread it. Suddenly, in an instant, suddenly, in an instant, son, the nations gather as we speak. When the new moon rises, you will know and understand. I don't know and understand. Five, five of 20. This is the day. This is the hour. My people will begin abandoning the true faith with great acceleration. Those who remain faithful will be confounded at what they see taking place. Now is the time of betrayal. I had no clue. He had already spoken it years in advance. Betrayals upon betrayals, sorrow and grief. Three times he had told me five years in advance what was going to happen. I forgot. I forgot. Those who remain faithful will be confounded at what they see taking place. Now is the time of betrayal. Now is the time of sorrow and of eyes filled with tears. Now is the time of great loss, a loss of many who you've held dear. 8, 27, 20, August 27th of 2020. Right, thus says the Lord, the faithful and true. I'm against the inhabitants of the earth and against the inhabitants of this land. They have wearied me beyond cure. From this day forward, violence and strife will fill your streets. Anybody know what happened shortly after in 2020? Remember Antifa? Remember BLM? Remember the hundreds of thousands, millions of warfighting immigrants that have crossed the border? Remember the vile demonic outpouring that's come upon this land? Remember, almost 
every nation on the earth is embroiled in some kind of proxy war right now since 2020? Yeah, I'm, this is just what the Lord said. From this day forward, violence and strife will fill your streets. No longer will peace be found within your walls. Men will turn to devour one another. Nothing will be left untouched. Remember what the red horse does? Peace is taken from the earth and men are given over to destroy one another. Your cup of iniquity overflows. Men of depraved minds will lap up its contents from the gutters of every street. Your leaders and your prophets and your priests have led the way in this great rebellion. Their appetite for fine food sacrificed to idols has caused all people to stumble and fall. They would not drink from my cup, though I offered it time and time again. But instead, they have stammered with an unquenchable thirst for the cup of demons. This is her end. Violence upon violence, bloodshed upon bloodshed. The righteous will stand in horror at the sights and sounds in the streets. They will be utterly amazed at what my hand has determined to do. And when your cities are aflame with the same degree of lust and passions of your people that burn within them, then I will destroy you completely. The nations of the earth will stand far from afar in perplexity at your desolation, for I will then bring against you those things which you which have been revealed to my servants. The nations of the east will come bent on violence. They have no regard for the beauty of life. Their hearts are hard. They have no regard for the flesh of the young and the innocent. Their own strength is their God. As you have devoured the flesh of the inhabitants of the earth, so too will your flesh be devoured. As you have been made drunk on the blood of the innocent, so too will this people, drunk with violence, destroy all. What is more, it will be unto a double portion." I, the one awesome in power, worthy of all fear, have determined to do this thing. I will not relent. I will satisfy your covenant with death, the hands you have struck with the grave. In the end, what did it profit you, O nation of blood? What did it profit your prophets and priests? Cry out to your gods in this, the day of your destruction. Surely those to whom you have given your worship will deliver you. Surely they will hear and listen and act in this day. But oh, my faithful servants, seek my face and live. Run as quickly as you can into the shelter of my presence. I have seen you and I have heard you and I will deliver you. Many will fall by the sword. The inhabitants of the earth will conspire against you because you bear my seal upon your head. But from everlasting to everlasting, I will confirm my covenant with you, my love which endures all things. As my son is high and lifted up, so too will those be who also endure for my name's sake. Your faces are radiant. The wicked will be ashes under the soles of your feet. Let your heart be glad once more. Do not go out among the people like one in mourning. All these things must take place. Listen to my words and kiss the sun, for redemption is with them. Blessed are all those whose hope is in me. We come with great reward, with all creation rejoice in all that is now taking place, for in justice we are coming to judge. I had this dream. This was in 2020. One of the most vivid dreams I've ever had in my life. <clears throat> I had this dream that I was in a mall, big mall, um, really, really big, which is interesting because we're going to Minnesota next week and who knows, maybe we'll go to Mall of America and do some ride roller coasters or something. I had this dream we're in this big mall and uh, I'm with my family, my family, including my parents and everything like that, like extended family. And we're at a restaurant inside the mall. You know, there's always restaurants inside the mall. And while we're in the mall, I hear what sounds like a uh, tornado siren winding up. You know the sound? That was pretty good, actually. I hear this tornado siren 
doesn't rise up. And you know, in the, you know how in malls, like the restaurants face the interior of the mall, right? So you go into the restaurants from the interior of the mall, like a TGI Fridays or something like that. And, uh, and as I hear this siren wind up, I look over and I see it looked like if anybody's seen World War Z with Brad Pitt, like zombie apocalypse type thing, right? And it was like this flood of people, like this demonically infused spirit of violence and rage and murder and bloodlust. And they come breaking through the doors, like water crashing through a house when it's being flooded out. And they flood in every aspect of the mall and their eyes were wild. And, I, and in the dream I had annoying, they were all liberals, okay? There's no way around it. They were. They were all demonically infused liberals. Like what you think, they're just already given over. They want to murder babies. They want to murder ch children. They want to mangle children. They want to sexualize children. They want to devour. They want to destroy. They're anti-human. That spirit, some spirit had already been in them. And when the siren went up, something clicked in them. And they came flooding in like a zombie apocalypse. And they slaughtered everybody with whatever they could get their hands on. They were not of their own person anymore. Something had taken them over when that sound, harmonic resonance was triggered. Something took them over. Anything they had from scissors to tyrant irons to pencils and pins to things they would pull out of their hair. The majority of them were women, believe it or not. And they just slaughtered and stabbed and slashed and killed and broke anything in their path. They had no concept of humanity. You could see it in their eyes. They were gone. They were no longer a human being. And I was running with the family and they killed my parents because they couldn't keep up. And as I'm running, like pushing Virginia and the kids, I'm taking hits. I'm getting stabbed by anything you could think of. Just this vile demonic thing. And I just keep push, 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 push. And they're flooding in everywhere. And they're just stabbing and slashing and devouring. People are bleeding out, screaming everywhere. And then for about 20 minutes straight. And then all of a sudden, in an instant, every single one of them stopped. Boom! Like a, like a flip got switched. Switch got flipped. And they're all standing there going, <laughs> just these hordes, these hordes of people. <laughs> and they don't even know what just happened. And they're sitting there breathing all hard. It went for 20 minutes. <laughs> and there's blood and bodies everywhere. There's about a two minute lull. <laughs> Boom! It goes again, the next wave. They snap back into this demonic rage and just start slaughtering everybody, the most vivid thing I've ever seen. And the Lord all of a sudden raised me up and gave me a bird's eye view, and it was happening all over the face of the nation. It was happening everywhere, in every city, in every church, in the preschools, in the elementary schools, in the homes. It was the red horse. Peace was taken from the earth and men were given over to slaughter one another. Literally just slaughter anything they could get their hands on. 20 minutes of slaughter. <laughs> They're all standing there wild. I don't know what just happened. Another 20 minutes of slaughter, three times over the face of the earth. Everywhere, all at one time. Now, do not take this beyond what I'm saying. All I can tell you is what the Lord gave me a knowing of. Do not run with it. Don't get all crazy and sensational and hyperbolic and weird about it. Online listeners, YouTubers, just tune me out because you guys are, most people just listen and they have no connectivity to the spirit, right? They're just feeding their flesh by listening to this stuff. So don't take this beyond anything other than this is what the Lord gave me a knowing of in the dream. For some reason in the dream, I knew had a very, very intense, intimate knowing that it was two days before a national election. Don't know why, but in the dream I did. I knew it was two days before a national election. And these sirens went and something was in everybody that was able to trigger them to mass slaughter. This dream was in 2020, okay? A zero hour had occurred. Dream. Some of you have heard at least some aspect of this in October 9th, 2020. In a dream, I saw all kinds of believers, masses of believers, radiant, joy-filled, talking. There was a couple hundred of them. 
and we are at like a big tent, like a revival tent, right? Like what we have out here for the summit, a big white tent. And all the believers were in camouflage. Every single one of them was in uniform. And in the dream I had of knowing, it just showed that there was a unity. They're all perfectly unified. They all look the same. They're all acting the same. And they were radiant with joy. And they were just laughing and doing like what we do before and after church, right? They're just fellowshipping outside the tent. And, and the Lord spoke and said, it's time. And when the Lord said it's time, they're all still enjoying one another and just talking and fellowshipping. And they're all wearing tricolor camos. And they walk into this tent. And the Lord said, not you. And I was like, but I want to be with the people. I want to be with my brothers and sisters. God, I want to be with my brothers and sisters. He said, not you. And there was these three towering, what I knew to be commanders. After the fact, praying through it, I'm like, oh, they were angelic host. They were officers and they were huge, like giants. And they go, not you. And I'm like, but the people, but I want to be with the people. That's where the joy is. And they said, sit here. And they sat me in a chair and they put all these chains around me and they put locks on the chains, but didn't lock them. Like, you're actually free to go whenever you want, but we're telling you that we're restraining you. So now you get to choose. You can take those off and go with them if you want. We're telling you sit here. And I was like, I don't understand why, God. I don't understand why, God. I want to be with the people. I want to be with the saints. I want to be with the people. I want to be with the saints, God. I don't understand why. And just then in these three giant things or whatever, these officers, they were dressed the same as we were standing on either side of me. All of a sudden they said, look up. And I look up and there was this huge swarm of drones, like micro drones, like the DGI Mavic drones or whatever. Huge swarm of drones, all perfectly in sync. By the way, this was before anybody had seen what DARPA was capable of with drone swarms. If you haven't seen what DARPA can do with drone swarms, how they fly in perfect formations, perfectly sync, perfectly equidistance, and they all carry a half pound of explosives on them. All the, you can go watch videos on this. This is before anybody had any understanding of any of that. This is what the Lord showed me. And as I'm sitting there restraining, I look up and you hear this, you know, the humming of all these drones. And I look up and they go, and they stop and then they go, slaughtered every believer that was in that tent. Slaughtered every single believer in an instant. The Lord said, do not fear, they're with me. Now your mission begins. By the way, I recently had a conversation with the former head of STRATCOM Strategic Command, which is the head of all nuclear missiles. I wanted to talk about the nuclear missile movements that are going on. And he goes, he stopped me. He goes, and he was on his way to an emergency meeting in Washington, D.C. This is three weeks ago, a month ago, okay? So this is the base commander of Stratcom, former base commander of Stratcom. I'll never in my life will I talk to somebody higher level than what this guy was. And it was an off-the-cuff interaction. Like, we just happened to be speaking at the same event. Who are you? Nice to meet you. He said of his army, I made fun of him. And then somebody goes, Jamie, do you know who that is? I'm like, no, but he said he's Army. So obviously he ain't ready for the Marines yet. You know that that's what Army stands for, right? And I'm saying to this, this guy, and he's kind of like, uh-huh. and then somebody goes, that's General so-and-so. I was like, oh, my bad, General. Nice to meet you, sir. <laughs> I thought you were just some old Army doggy. And he goes, actually, I was the base commander of Stratcom. I'm like, dang it, I'm such an idiot all the time. But in Jamie fashion, I said, you still weren't a Marine, sir. <laughs> so that's what I said. You still weren't a Marine, sir. Anyways, I digress. As I'm talking to him, I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? He's like, oh, I'm on my way to D.C., an emergency meeting. I'm like, uh-oh, if you're being called to D.C., knowing your background, that's a pretty big deal. And he goes, that's not the crazy thing. The crazy thing is I just got back from Silicon Valley. You would not believe what we are doing with drones. It is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. That was four weeks ago. I had that direct conversation. This stream was from 2020. Okay? Right. Thus says the Lord. I'm about to do something before your very eyes that will call you to weep with no end. My judgment is at the door. Fierce enemies have been summoned to carry out my will. I have called them in righteousness. Even as you write, they gather from afar. 
They have allied themselves to bring low this nation of demons. They will break the altars of your sorceries in two. Bodies will lay in the streets. The smell of death will overcome you. This is here. This is now. Even as I speak, they have made themselves ready. Have I not said you will see it with your own eyes? They will come first to the east against the great city. Then they will come from the west. Confusion and fear will tear the middle. Men will cry out to one another for answers. Their hearts will give way with fear. This is your just reward. I called out, but no one would listen. The trump was blown, but no one gave heed. Your shepherds profaned my name among the inhabitants of the land. It's always about the shepherds. Every single word I've ever gotten was about the shepherds. It's about the pastors. It's always about the pastors. They had no regard for the blood of the innocent. They gave their consent to this city of sorceries. They fed on their delicacies day after day, and they were never satisfied. They did this, but they would not turn to me. They willfully, particular word, refused the cup from my hand and instead lapped from the cup of demons. Right. Thus says the Lord, the time is at hand. You will no longer be perplexed for all will be made known. You who have not sold your clothes, who have rejected the cup of lawlessness, listen to what I say to you now. I have seen you and I have heard you. It dawned on me as I was going through all these, how the Lord was saying the same thing all the time. I just never remembered it. He was constantly saying the same thing every time he gave the word. It never changed. I couldn't even remember the words that he said, which is why I write them down. And then as I went through all of these this week, I'm like, he never stopped. He never changed. He never changed his tone. Praise be to God. It wasn't my stupid flesh deceiving me. He never stopped saying the same thing. I have seen you and I have heard you and you have found favor with me. My face will shine upon you from everlasting to everlasting, but you must endure what is soon to take place. It will require great patience and endurance. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will not forsake my promises to you, yet you will suffer greatly for a times, time, and half a time. Right, thus says the Lord, let not your heart be troubled. Your boundary lines will fall in pleasant places and you will rest from all your labors. Your inheritance is great. It will not disappoint. My son is coming to you and he will avenge your deep grief. He will come and bring healing to the nations. He will come and break the bow of his enemies. Do not lose heart at what you will soon bear witness to. Do not be easily shaking. Ride forth in the glory and many will follow after you. Soon, son, soon. Three, six of 2022. Damascus has fallen, which is interesting. He ha People keep waiting for what, Isaiah 14? Is that what it is? Isaiah 17 prophecy for the destruction of Damascus to give them an indicator that we're in the lateness of the hour. Here's what the Lord said. If you hadn't seen what was happening in Aleppo and Damascus at that time, he said, it's, it's, that prophecy's done. Quit looking for it. He says, Damascus has fallen. The fat of Jacob will now fade. The harvesters I have appointed will soon glean and beat, so little will be left remaining. But do not fear. They will hear my rebuke at last. The raging seas will be no more. I said, what, O oh Lord, am I? would you have me to understand about this? He said, I'm about to move mightily over the face of the earth. The time of wondering and straining to see will be over. You will see with your own eyes all that I have spoken. I'm coming against your nation. 
Many others will fall too. Your cup of iniquity has reached its full. It has spilled unto the inhabitants of the earth. Many have drunk from this cup of unimaginable iniquity, and now they will drink from my cup of terror. The time is now. It's the Lord shouting. I will guard you in the shadow of my wings. You need not fear what is now coming to pass. As I have provided for you in the wilderness, so too I will be your provision amid great suffering. Tell the people, I am coming soon. Wash the sleep from your eyes so that you may see clearly. Soon you will look upon my glory. You will see and you will not die. Hold on to what you have for my reward is with me. Do not fear what will be required of you. Do not hide your eyes from all that will soon come to pass. I, the Lord your God, have purchased you for a price and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not grow weary in doing good. Turn many back to righteousness. But to the one who fears, who seeks to preserve their own life, they are those who will see my back and not my face. Man. But the one who endures to the end will not be disappointed, for with their own eyes they will finally see my face. April 5th, 2023. Tell my people... The time of plenty is nearing its end. My people must prepare themselves for great endurance. Tell them, I am coming soon. Blessed are those whose hearts are stayed upon me. I will be with them even until the end. Call the assembly and I will show up. So, so much more. So much more. I gave you the cliff notes. So much more. The central theme, if I were to read this in the fullness of the words given, is that God is at enmity with America in particular and in Amer with American pastors and churches and Christians and peculiar peculiarity. The self-appointed prophets and the self-appointed pastors and the self-appointed manipulators of the, of the word, he is at High enmity with his people. Every word. I didn't read the ones that were just against the shepherds and against his church. I just read the ones about war. Because he said, it's here. Tell the people, it's here. War. War. War is here. War is here. I am loosing the red horse soon. I don't know what soon is, everybody. Everybody understand that? I have no clue what the Lord's soon is, and I would never presume to know what, know what his soon is. I, when he gave me these words initially, I thought it was going to happen that month. And here we are seven years later, and he's still saying, soon, soon. It's right at the door. No more delay. No more delay with your own eyes. He told me, your youth will be taken from you in an instant. And he showed me the great weariness of sorrow that would beset me where in, my youth would instantly be gone because of the sorrow and the terror that comes on this land. So I don't know. I'm 43. What's youth? How long do we have? What's considered youthful? I don't know. I thought it was coming when I was 33. I don't know. But he said, your youth will be taken from you in an instant. With your own eyes, you will see everything I have revealed to you in my word, through my servants, through the prophets, and everything that you have learned and ever heard about. You will see it all with your own eyes. And your youth will be taken from you in an instant. I don't know what soon is. I don't know. Pray about it. Take all this before the Lord in prayer. Test every spirit to see it's from the Lord. Test it. I don't know. I do know that the Russian ambassador left the country last night with all of his security and all of his aides and all Russian documents and all encrypted communications left. And Russia told all 1.5 million Russian citizens, get out of Israel now. They're getting ready to do it. Japan did the same thing. Iran did the same thing. That is the last thing you do before you push the buttons. The ambassadors are the last ones out with their staff. Last thing you do, last night that happened. The Lord told me to speak this on Monday, early in the week. And then here it is right at our door. I don't know what it means. I know that there is a single unifying aspect of God's judgment on the land. Do you know what it is? 
is that the people deny God's judgment on the land. Single unifying aspect all throughout scripture of why God judge the, judges the land is because the people deny that God will ever judge the land. Amos 9 8 through 10, surely the eyes of the sovereign Lord are on the sinful kingdoms. I will destroy it from the face of the earth, yet I will not totally destroy the descendants of Jacob, declares the Lord. All the sinners among my people will die by the sword. All those who say disaster will never overtake us or meet us. Micah 3, hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, who despise justice and distort all his right, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness. Her leaders judge for a bride, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets tell fortunes for money. Sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? He says, yet they look for the Lord's support and say, the Lord, is not the Lord among us? No disaster will ever befall us. Therefore, because they are saying this, Jerusalem and Zion will become a heap of rubble and the temple a mound overgrown with thickets. Because they're saying he'll never do anything. Ezekiel 13, he says, son of man, you prophesy against them and tell them what they're going to do. Because the pastors have not repaired the breaches in the walls for my people so that it will stand firm on the day of battle, on the day of the Lord, because the pastors and the priests would not equip the people because they they give false visions and lying divinations. Because they lead my people astray, saying, peace, peace, when I never told them to speak peace. I said, tell them judgment. Every time I hear somebody talk about revival, I throw up in my mouth. Sorry, I know they're a false teacher right away. He says, lying divinations, false visions. Oh, the great awakening. Oh, when Trump gets in a, oh, the great awakening. Oh, the, blah, blah, blah. oh, the Ashbury revival. Really? Are any of those kids walking with the Lord? What happened to the Ashbury revival? It was never a revival. It was a counterfeit, emotionally predatory thing by the puppeteers in the pulpits, exploiting the people for money, giving you false visions and lying divinations, saying, peace, peace, revival, revival, restoration, restoration. Disaster will never come upon our nation. We're God's highly favored. We're God's chosen. We're wealthy and in need of nothing because we're American Christians. I'm telling you, war is at your doorstep. Jeremiah 5, 12 through 17, they have lied, the pastors, the priests, the prophets, they have lied about the Lord. They said he will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We'll never see the sword or famine. The prophets are just winds and their word is not in them. Let what they say be done to them. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Because the people have spoken these words. Which words? Which words? Because if people are speaking which words? God will never do anything. We're favored. Look at how many missionaries we sent out. Look at our mega churches. Look at our satellite campuses. Look how affluent it are. Look at the impact we have. Look at our global impact. I can vaingloriously Samuel cast my face to 18 different campuses and have everybody look on me and bring money into my coffers, God will never judge us. God will never destroy us. God wants you to know that you can have positive, encouraging Caleb in your life every day of your life. You are blessed. Sing songs about yourself, not about me. Sound familiar? He says, because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth of fire. And these people the wood that it consumes. People of Israel declares the Lord. Because you are saying this, he says, people of Israel, listen to what I'm going to tell you next. I am bringing a distant nation against you, an ancient and enduring nation, a people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand. Their quivers are like an open grave. All of them are mighty warriors. They will devour your harvest and food. They will devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds. They will devour your vines, vines and fig trees. And with the sword, they will destroy all the fortified cities in which you trust because you keep saying that. That's why I'm bringing a distant nation against you. 
Revelation 18, 7 through 8. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself because in her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned as a queen. I'll never be a widow. I'll never mourn. Therefore, have you noticed a common theme? Therefore, in one day, her plagues will overtake her. Death and mourning and famine, and she will be consumed with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her because she boasts in her heart, God will never do anything against us. We are so highly favored. Zephaniah 1, 12 through 18. At that time, talking about the day of the Lord, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think to themselves, the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Have you heard what the Lord has been speaking all the way from Genesis to the very end? The same reason why his judgment is going to be poured out on his people, because they lie about him. They lie about him. They prophesy falsely about him. They give false, false visions about him. They falsely puff up people. It says they exploit people fabricating score, stories, greedy for unjust gain. It's because of the Christians why the whole earth is going to be judged. Second Thessalonians 2, the man of lawlessness cannot be revealed until the great apostasy occurs first. The church determines when the beast system comes online. It's the church the great falling away, the great apostasy, the great reduction of the Lord. He says, surely these are the ignorant, the dumb people. I'll go to the leaders and the prophets and the peace. Surely they will know the way to the Lord and teach the people to fear me. And what's he say? I went to them and realized they too, with one accord, had thrown off my yoke. And they do not say to the people, come, let us fear the Lord. They say, let you appreciate the Lord and know how special you are to God. Because they say this, because they say this, because they keep lying about who I am, that's why I'm coming to judge you. My people, my people, my people. Read Zephaniah 1, woe. Read Zephaniah 2, woe. Read Zephaniah 3, woe. Read Habakkuk, woe. It says, my heart pounded within me. I said, the Lord showed me the war and the armies that are coming against me. My heart pounded within me. My body filled with me. Bodies everywhere. Bodies, bodies. He goes through this litany. He's like, oh my goodness, the Lord showed me. The Lord has showed me. I'm telling you, he is coming soon. No more delay. Isaiah 30, 18 through 14. Go write it on a tablet for them, inscribe it on a scroll for the days to come that it may be an everlasting witness. He, he wrote it down. I'm gonna, ha I have a testimony and a witness against my own people. For these are a rebellious people, a deceitful children, children unwilling to listen to the Lord's instruction because they say to the seers, see no more visions. And to the prophets, give us no more visions of what is right. Prophesy illusions, tell us pleasant things, get off the way and stop confronting me with the Holy One of Israel. Did you hear why God? Why God has written on a scroll and he has a witness against his people? Because they're saying positive, encouraging K-love. I say that facetiously, but that is the spirit of the age. He says, because they're saying that, prophesy illusions, tell me pleasant things. Whatever you do, you can tell me anything you want about the Lord, but do not confront me with the Holy One of Israel. Tell me everything else, though. He says, therefore, notice how many times he says, therefore, because they're saying this about me. Therefore, this is what the Holy One of Israel says. Because you have rejected this this message and relied on oppression and depended on deceit, this sin, the sin of scoffing the justice and judgment in the fear of the Lord. He says, this sin, this singular sin will become for you like a high wall cracked and bulging that collapses suddenly in an instant because of what you're saying about me, that I'm not coming to judge you.
Don't worry about anything. You just make your money and you just live with one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom and you'll never, be, you'll never see harm. You'll never be a widow. No mourning will ever befall you. And all the prophets that are saying that judgment is coming, it says, you say in your spirit, let what they're saying be done to them because they're wrecking my paradigm. They're wrecking my hopes for my life. I want to I wanna retire and travel the world and buy a super yacht. It's disgusting. Malachi 2. And now, you priest, this warning is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not resolved to honor me. You have wearied the Lord with your words. How have we wearied him, they say? By saying, all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord, hyper grace, and where is this God of justice? He's never coming to judge you. He goes, that's why. That's why you weary me. What do you mean? Why we weary you, God? We're wealthy, need nothing. He says, because you're preaching hyper grace. You say all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord. Love is love. Love wins. Love does. Love, love, love. Every Francis Chan book ever written. Every Bethel and Hill song ever created. Yeah, all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord because God is love. And don't worry about the God of justice. Where is he? Mockers and scoffers. He goes, that's why. Because my priests are saying that about me. Have you heard a common theme? Jeremiah's open lament of the depths of rebellion of God's people in Jeremiah 17. He says, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved, for you are the one of praise. They keep saying to me, as I'm telling them what you told me, I'm telling them judgment is coming. I'm telling them judgment is coming. I'm telling them judgment is coming. I think Jeremiah went through what? Five kings? 43 years of proclaiming the coming judgment of God. And he says, they keep saying to me, where is the word of the Lord, Jeremiah? You're the false prophet. We're the true prophets. Peace, peace and security. Peace and security. Peace and security. God doesn't have an offense with us. He says, the people keep saying to me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it now be fulfilled on you, Jeremiah, for warning us that God is coming to judge and guess what? At the end of the age, at the end of the age, 1 Thessalonians 5. Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night while people are saying peace and security. While his people are saying peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Revelation 3, to the angel of the church of delay to see a right. These are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one. So because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spit you out of your mouth, out of my mouth, because you say, notice it's all about what we say. Because you say, because you keep saying, because you say, because the prophets are saying, because the priests are saying, because my people are saying. He says, because you say, I'm wealthy and in need of nothing. Not knowing that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. That's why. Because of what you're saying about me. And 2 Peter 2, 1 through 3. There will be false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. The truth is our God is just and our God is holy and our God is righteous and our God will not be mocked and our God will not be scoffed. They are bringing the way of truth into repute. Peace, peace. And then he says, I never told them to tell you that. They prophesy falsely on my behalf. I never sent them. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. I never sent them to tell you peace. I said, repent for the day the Lord is at hand. I said, consecrate yourself today for I, the Lord, have an offense against you. I said, I am filled with wrath and I cannot keep it in. I said, I come to bring peace. I mean, I come to bring sword, not peace. I come to divide. I said, I'm coming to destroy 
all the wickedness and all the evildoers and judgment begins in my house. That's what I said. They're liars. They are false teachers. They are false prophets. I never sent them to say that. Second Peter 3. Above all, you must understand this. You guys have heard me talk about this before, right? Think of the context. I always go contextual. Who is Peter? How intimate did he walk with Christ? First one to acknowledge his deity. Steps out of the boat and walks on the water. Yeah, he rejects Christ in his moment of his greatest need, but then he's restored. He's the one spoken of the, as the rock of the church. Christ speaks all these things. He had more intimacy and communion with Christ than almost any of the other disciples. He's a part of the inner circle, the inner circle, the top three that walked in such intimacy. So when he sat under Christ, knows Christ, walk with Christ, engage the resurrected Christ, watch Christ be ascended, and he says, above all, you must understand this? You think you might want to pay attention? He could have told you about glory. He could have told you about heaven. He could have told you about eternal life. He could have told you about the glorification, the resurrection. He could have told you about how to rightly love. He told you about dying in the world. This, that wasn't his focus when he says, above all, you must understand this. So think of the context of who is saying this. Above all, you must understand this. That in the last days, scoffers will come scoffering, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he's promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. We'll never see harm. I'll never be a widow. We'll never see mourning. He says, above all, you better understand that this is what they're going to be saying right before my king comes and says, they deliberately forget that the same God who judged the earth with a deluge is coming again to judge it with fire. Above all, you must understand this thing so that you're not caught unaware and you have no regard for the fear of the Lord. Let me wrap it up. You can deny reality, but you can't deny the consequences of denying reality. Everybody heard that axiom before? It's a pretty famous quote. You can deny reality, but you can't deny the consequences of denying reality. War is coming. Everybody knows it except for Americans. And in particular, American Christians, everybody knows it. Romanians know it. You should read their news. I do. You should read Moldova's news. They are all preparing for war. Sweden, Norway, Finland, preparing for war. Naval assets everywhere. Nuclear bunkers everywhere. Movement assets everywhere. Backup communications being put in place. There's a reason why Elon Musk and China are throwing tens of thousands of satellites into the sky. There's a reason why. There's a reason why they did depopulation this and depopulation that and depopulation that. There's a reason why all the food production plants have been caught and catching, magically catching on fire in the last two years. There's a reason why for the colon of this and the colon of that and geoengineering this and geoengineering that. There's a reason why Russia's restrained, Iran's restrained, everybody's restrained. There's a reason why it's a done deal. War is at the door, and war is coming against the land of unwalled villages, Ezekiel 39, who says, nothing will ever come. I sit as a queen on my throne. I will never see mourning. I will never see disaster. I sit enthroned as a queen. What's the icon of America? Lady Liberty. Mystery Babylon, the daughter of Babylon. It's the feminine deity aspect of the most wicked spirit in the history of humanity. The queen of heaven, Ishtar, Ashtarte, Astaroth, Inanna, the statue of liberty is Astaroth. It's Astaroth. That's who it is. Sitting in throne, you'll never come against me, God. And the American Christians go, great awakening. Next election cycle. Great awakening. 
Trump's our man. A Kabbalist is our man of righteousness. Peace, peace. Don't anybody get worried. Peace, prosperity. Just keep coming in. Keep coming in. I will tackle Jamie from his podium who's telling you that war is coming and tell you not to listen to that guy so that you keep bringing money into my coffers so I can build my kingdom on earth. I'm telling you, war is coming on this nation soon. Very, very soon. God will not be mocked and he will not be scoffed and he will not be called a liar by his own people. Because you say, because you say, because you say, because you keep saying, because they say, that's why I'm going to do it. He's not going to be called a liar by his people. I don't know the timing. Again, I don't presume to know what God's soon is, have no clue. But I personally have been assured in no uncertain terms that my youth is going to be taken from me in an instant. That the things that have been shown and the things that have been seen and the things that have been revealed through his servants and through his word, I will see with my own eyes that it's not for a future generation. I don't care if you believe it or not. Take it to the Lord. I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm telling you what the Lord's told me. So guess what? Repent for the day the Lord is at hand. Repent consecrate yourselves. Remove any devoted things from among your camp because you've been made liable for destruction on the field of battle. Sin of Achaia, Joshua 7, that's what he said. You cannot stand against your enemies until you remove the devoted thing from among your camp. Purify your camp, consecrate yourselves to the Lord. Throw off every sin that so easily entangles and encumbers. Love each other well. Love like you've never loved before because love covers over a multitude of sin. Be found in the gathering of the saints and encouraging one another even more so as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Do the work of the evangelist while it's called today. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Do the work of an evangelist. War is coming. Many will die. I see what's going on in North Carolina. Oh, God. Oh, God, because I've seen those realities so intimately so many times. I know exactly what it looks like. And I know the cries and the moans and the sorrow and the fear in people's eyes when I go into those types of areas. And the bodies and the bodies and the bodies everywhere. And the thing that grieves me more than anything else is I know statistically few are saved. They're in hell. And it happened in an instant and the suddenly. In an instant and the suddenly, the dam broke. The thing bulging, just like scripture said, bulging, it broke. Suddenly, in an instant, in a moment. Have you seen the videos? They had no warning. There was no preparation. And they're dead and they're eternally separated from a God who loves them and proved it through his son, Jesus Christ. And they're in hell. So many what do you think's going on in Ukraine? What do you think's going on in Russia? What do you think's going on in Lebanon? What do you think's going on in Gaza? What do you think's going on with the Jews? They don't know Jesus. They're going to hell. They're all going to hell. It's on you to tell them the good news, right? Smack in the throes of combat, right? Smack them in the fog of war. There's a God who loves you and he proved it by sending his son to die for you, to heal you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness that where he is, you might be also. Do the work of the evangelist. War is coming and billions, billions with a B are going to be eternally separated from a holy God who's done nothing but hold out the cup of fellowship, the cup of fellowship, the cup of fellowship, the cup of, oh, but they want the cup of demons. I guess I'll satisfy the desire of their heart. Solidify yourselves in Christ alone and an identity in Christ alone. You must know the love of God has for you, each one to the individual, because God's perfect love casts out all fear. You have to be perfected by his love. And above all, I know this sounds really crazy, given what we just worked through for a very long time. Above all saints, you must rejoice and praise your God. Just sing and make music to him, because you want to know why? All the creation and all the heavenly hosts as God is obliterating Mystery Babylon in a single day, in a single hour. You know their only response? 
Their only response? You want to hear it? Rejoice over her, you heavens. Rejoice, you people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets, for God has judged her with the judgment she imposed on you. Praise God. She's destroyed. Praise God. The pedophiles are gone, and Hollywood's gone, and DC's gone, and Miami's gone, and Sin City's gone. And praise God. Praise God the NEA can't sexualize your children anymore. Praise God they can't manipulate you with their Babylonian money magic. Praise God they're not doing the genocide in Rwanda and the genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina and the genocide in Gaza right now and the genocide over here. By the way, the U.S. did the genocide of the Nazi with the Nazis. The United States of America undergirded the entire Nazi party. Hitler was the Time Magazine Man of the Year right before he implemented the final solution. Henry Ford went over there to tell them how to build the factories and make them the most efficient they possibly could to destroy the Jews. The United States of America did it. So you go, Praise God, because that's what the heavenly hosts are doing. Praise God. It's done. It's done. Rejoice. Rejoice. She's destroyed. She's been judged. Revelation 19, after I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, hallelujah. This is after the destruction of mystery Babylon. That's what the apostle John heard. The sound of many waters saying, hallelujah. She got judged. Finally, she got judged. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again, they shouted, Hallelujah. The smoke of her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on a throne and they cried out, Amen, hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, like the loud purse of thunder, shouting, hallelujah. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad when the judgment comes upon the inhabitants of the earth. For the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Then the angel of the Lord said to me, write this. This is all the only conclusion to the destruction of Babylon. All this. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise, 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 glorify, magnify, worship, joy, gladness. And he says, then the angel of the Lord said to me, an angel of the Lord talking to John, it was a Christophany, it was Christ himself, that's what most scholars agree, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper and land. And he added, these are the true words of God. That's it. I don't know what else to tell you. Do business with the holy God, he loves you. War is coming. I will not shrink back from telling you that. Let the mockers, let the scoffers, let the haters do whatever they're going to do. Let the deniers, let, let them anger, let them rage, let them gnash their teeth because their love of the world and the things of the world is going to come to an end and they want you to prophesy illusions and tell them pleasant things but never confront them with the Holy One of Israel. I'm here to tell you the Holy One of Israel has an offense with his people and with this nation. And he's coming and righteous justice to judge the inhabitants of the earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's a wrap.